Welcome to Poland. Located in Central Europe, Poland shares its borders with seven other countries, so the culture reflects many influences and thousands of years of history. But living next to stronger countries has often meant trouble. After Nazi Germany invaded during World War II, most of Poland's Jews perished in concentration camps. When the Russians drove the Nazis out, they occupied Poland themselves, forcing people to live under communism. Eventually, Poland elected its own democratic government, and the Soviet system collapsed. Poland grew prosperous and joined the European Union in 2004. Like many growing countries, Poland relies on fossil fuels. During the freezing winter, many people burn coal to heat their homes. As part of a global effort to curb carbon emissions, Poland's leaders promised to cut all coal production by 2049 and switch to renewable energy. But will it work? Those living in fear of climate change are eager to do anything it takes. But others are starting to ask questions. This is Anya. She lives with her parents, Timon and Clara, in the old city of Krakow. Every morning, Anya walks to school with her best friend, Magda. Sometimes after classes, they stop in Old Town and visit Anya's Aunt Sofia, who owns a popular cafe that has been in the family since World War II. When Anya's not helping out at the cafe or writing in her online blog, she loves visiting her grandfather, Jakub, with her family. Sometimes, Aunt Zofia joins them, or even Anya's brother, Michal, who drives his own freight truck. Then it's really a party. Recently, Anya's classmates have all been talking about climate change. Like many people around the world, they think that Poland's smog and carbon emissions will contribute to rising temperatures across the planet. Anya knows that coal pollution is a problem. Coal-powered plants create 70% of Poland's electricity, and around 37% of the population burns coal to heat their homes in the winter. In response to the smog this creates, cities like Krakow have banned the cheap brown coal people use. But Anya's teacher says that is not enough. And if Poland doesn't eliminate all fossil fuels, ecosystems throughout the world will collapse. With her teacher's direction, Anya is writing about the dangers of climate change on her blog. She even gave a speech at a climate conference. Anya's parents are proud of her hard work. But when her anxiety gets high and she tells them that fossil fuels will soon lead to a climate disaster, they challenge her with some thought-provoking questions. They encourage her to consider how the planet has been warming and cooling since prehistoric times long before carbon emissions were a factor. Can she explain that? They ask her if everyone in Poland stops using coal. Will that lower Earth's temperature? Especially when countries like China and India burn many times the amount of coal as Poland and are not cutting back. Her parents' questions have made Anya wonder if she's only been hearing one side of the argument at school and in her online community. She definitely has some research to do. In 2022, Russia invaded Ukraine and Poland supported the Ukrainian people. As a result, Russia stopped supplying Poland with natural gas and Poland banned the Russian coal that many people use to heat their homes. These sudden changes are making energy even more expensive. Anya is finally recognizing the bitter irony. Poland's efforts to be more green had left them vulnerable to Russia's manipulations. And unlike her friends, she's starting to wonder, are her country's wind farms and solar panels producing enough energy to replace the coal and gas everyone had been using? From what she's reading, Anya sees that renewable energy sources don't contribute that much energy. Unlike coal or fossil fuels, energy from wind or sun is unreliable, expensive, and difficult to store. In fact, only 10% of the world's energy comes from those sources. 
This makes Anya wonder, where will Poland get the energy it needs? If coal and gas are banned, and if renewable energy isn't enough, then what's the plan? When Anya brought this up in class, her friends just stared at her. Her teacher didn't have a good response, and even Magda did not back her up. This gave Anya the uncomfortable feeling that her questions were not welcome. It's fall now, and around the country, many are struggling with energy poverty. With the ban on Russian coal and gas, people can't afford or even find fuel to heat their homes. Heating and electricity bills are much higher than they were a few months ago. Around the neighborhood, Anya sees people storing wood, old furniture, and smelly trash in their yards. Soon, when the temperature drops, her neighbors will burn that trash to stay warm and cause more toxic pollution than they would by burning coal. Energy poverty means trouble for the family. Aunt Zofia worries about the cost of running her cafe in the freezing winter months. Her gas bill is nearly 10 times higher than it was a few months ago. And everyone is worried about Grandfather Jakub. If he's not able to keep his apartment warm, his coughing and lung problems will get worse. Anya is blogging all about fossil fuels and how energy poverty, not climate change, is the real threat. She is presenting evidence from her research in every blog post, but the response is not what she expected. Many readers are posting mean comments. At school, most of her friends barely talk to her anymore. Even Magda, who can smell the fumes from the burning trash, continues to believe that Poland's coal ban is saving the earth. After many arguments, they've stopped walking together. Losing friends has been hard for Anya, but her family is proud of her for telling the truth. Timon, Clara, and grandfather Jakob are encouraging Anya by sharing their own stories of perseverance. Timon remembers having to meet people late at night in a freezing cellar to avoid the communist authorities. But that didn't stop him from sharing his ideas. Grandfather Jakob tells her about the Warsaw Uprising, When the city's Jews fought back against the Nazis, Jakob remembers helping smuggle food, blankets, and even ammunition to the Jewish resistance fighters through sewer tunnels. Through her family's stories, Anya is realizing that fighting oppression is risky and that it always takes courage. It's winter now, and Anya's blog is reaching many new readers. But her last post was a sad one. After 60 years of family ownership, Aunt Zofia had to close the cafe. When Magda heard the sad news, she finally apologized to Anya, and the two girls joined Anya's family for one last celebration at the cafe. After publishing her blog post, Anya's new readers thanked her and shared stories of soaring energy prices and struggling businesses all over Europe. To everyone's surprise, Poland's government removed the restrictions on brown coal, allowing people to use it to heat their homes. Anya is now using her blog to fundraise money and buy cheap brown coal from Poland's neighbor, the Czech Republic. She's even gone with Michał to pick it up in his truck and deliver it to people all across the region. Finally, things are happening in Anya's house. Michał is spending time at home to help plan the coal deliveries. Aunt Zofia comes over for dinner and to visit with Grandfather Jakob, who moved into their spare bedroom. Jakob is delighted to be living with the family once again. He reminds them that no matter what happens, they're better together.